I'm still here at TLA, but I'm really glad that I stuck around because I uh, have Andrew Clements and his new book, The Losers Club. Well, welcome to TLA. Is this your first TLA? No, but, uh, but don't ask me the year when I was here last. It was a while ago. It is like a huge, huge conference. It is. Uh, the, the last time I was here, it was memorable because I spoke to a room with about 1,500 people in it. It was the biggest hall I've ever addressed, I think. It was... Uh, yeah, no, it's an, ama it's an amazing uh, organization, and I'm glad that you're here to talk about the Losers Club. The New York Times called you the master of the school story. That's like, a, you know, a title that's really, uh, that you, do you feel you have to live up to that? Well, uh, no, okay. I don't. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm grateful for their accolades, but uh, then again, you know, other things have been said as well. So you have to take the bitter with the sweet. That was a sweet one. Yeah, so the Losers Club comes out in August, just in time for the beginning of school. So tell us, and this is a school story. It is. Well, the main character's problem is that he loves to read too much, uh, to the point where it gets in the way of his schoolwork and gets in the way of his, uh, in, in, a way, in, in a way of his life. You know, he... he uh, you know, I always tell kids uh, when when I write re respond to their letters to me, I I say I'm glad you've discovered that reading is a great way to spend some of your time, not all of your time. I don't say that, but but that's the truth. We don't, you know, we're not trying to turn them into just complete bookaholics. You know, we want them to love books, but there's a whole lot more as well. Um, so. It's a, uh, and this guy's kind of tipped over the edge in the wrong direction. He's become famous at school for always trying to read during classes. And when he's not reading, he's thinking about what he just finished reading. Um, so his grades are suffering. And, you know, on uh, page one, he's sitting on the seat outside the principal's office waiting. You know, he's 45 minutes into his sixth grade year, and he's already been sent to the, to the, principal's office for not paying attention in class and trying to read on the sly. Uh, so would you call, your character is uh, Alec, uh, yes, and uh, would you call him like a reading addict? Kind of. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a genuine bookworm, and, and he's, uh, he's a lot like me at that point in my life. And in fact, I was called by a number of kids, uh, some friends, some not, uh, the bookworm. You know, I, I had plenty of raw materials to draw upon in terms of just, because um, there's nothing better than reading. I mean, I, you know, my definition of a vacation is books and the time to read them. That's, that's what a vacation is. And, um, and one of the great sadnesses in my life is that I've discovered that I cannot both write stories and read other people's books at the same time, which is a very sad thing, because, you know, when, uh, you know, books that, you get pulled into a book, and that just derails my own narrative thread that I'm trying to keep alive night by night as I write. But you do read other people's stories because uh, oh, this sure. this book is filled well, with references to that, other people's one of the stories. Reasons I loved writing this so much it, because because I had to read all these books to make sure that I had the sense of it right and and the main character sense because he refers to the books all the time and he's the kind of person who as as many of us do. Uh, you know, we you know we'll have an experience in our lives, and right away our thought will go to an experience that we read in, you know, a novel that we loved, uh, whether it's War and Peace or who knows what. You know, some you know somewhere your thought just goes there because these books have a way of making such a great impression on you. And and he is one of these people. He just you know, books really are his life, almost to the point where it's crowding out his so-called real life. And, and, and one of the questions the book tries to answer is, you know, what is the, the, that line between, you know, the life that books add to, and is there a tipping point? And uh, so... <laughs> Right. So uh, the book actually has a uh, bibliography in the back with, the, uh, with all the books mentioned. It has a list, yes. 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 Which is a dangerous thing because I, you know, and I, I think I've mentioned uh, at the head of that list, um, you know, there are so many, so, so, so many wonderful books. Don't be surprised if some of your favorites aren't here. Some of my favorites aren't here either. I was just trying to make it true to this character's experience and his sense of things. 
and he has a particular bent. He loves action, adventure, and whatnot. Um, but he has other sides, as as most of us do as readers. Um, so again, I was um, I, I didn't start out with a list of books that I wanted to mention. I started with a character and just kind of flowed through his reading life. Uh, was it difficult not to mention one of your books? No. Wait, wait, were you tempted? Not tempted no, at all? No, I wasn't <laughs> tempted. That, uh, that's what we call reviewer bait. That's asking for a big sock in the nose, right, is what that right. is. Yes, but... Uh, but kind of, you to, kind of you to say that. Yes. So, uh, Alec and his brother Luke, and his uh, family, his parents are uh, Star Wars, um, like, uh, not addicts, I guess, you know, but nuts. Fan, nuts. Yeah, nuts. Yeah, they're fans. They're nuts. Yeah, they're, right. they're, they're super fans. They've got all the, uh, all the action figures from the first one, you know, two of each kind. They've got all the, uh, you know, they've even got a Star Wars video game in their family room. You know, they're, they're real aficionados. And uh, the brother Luke is named for Luke Skywalker. Right. And Alec is named for Alec Guinness, who of course played the role. And he feels good because at least he was named for a real person, not just fictional characters. So he was glad about that. Right. And now, are, are you a Star Wars fan? Uh, I have observed uh, Star Wars fandom up close. We have four sons. And, uh, and I would say two of them were, you know, serious Star Wars you know, our oldest son was, you know, he saw the very first Star Wars movie uh, when he was young and, and just went all in. Uh, so um, I've, I've observed it up close. And so the Losers Club is a, uh, a club he forms in school uh, for, to read. To read. Yes. yes right. And, and he names it the Losers Club because he doesn't want there to be a lot of people there. To form a club at this after school program, you have to have two people. So he's saying, that's how many people I want in the club. And I'm going to call it the Losers Club because it will keep others away. They'll 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 shun us. Yeah. Well, people will have to read uh, the book to find out uh, actually what happens with the Losers uh, Club. But uh, you not only uh, mention uh, books, but you mention uh, uh, some short stories, science fiction, uh, Ray Bradbury, and I actually don't recall the title of the short story, but I'm sure you do. But you uh, make reference to it. But you. Uh, really uh, pique uh, people's interest uh, either to go back and reread or in my case to read that particular story now uh, uh, it's, it's called all summer in a day right. and it is it really is a, an amazing piece of short fiction and uh, it's very short and um, but extremely powerful and it made a great impression on me when I first read it um, because it's kind of the, you know, if you take the least empathetic person in the world and make them read that story, they will walk away feeling uh, deeply human and, and deeply empathetic for another person just because of the way it's structured. Well, you know, I'm a former uh, school librarian, and a retired school librarian, uh, but uh, reading this book, I said, well, if I was still in a school, I know the how I would display this. I would put this book out and then put all the other books mentioned all around wow. so that uh, people can read this book and then be tempted to read the, uh, the others. So the book comes out in, um, in uh, August, as I said, yeah. right uh, before school. Your book... Uh, Frindle. Yes. Still, is it still uh, selling? Can I still find it in print? Yes, I think you can. <laughs> it's. Uh, I'm grateful to say it's still going strong. At uh, last time I heard, there were uh, somewhere north of six million copies in print in the U.S. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did you say six million copies? Yes. Well, no, it, it has. Uh, um, there have been a, a lot of very kind teachers and librarians who have put all of our children through college. <laughs> uh, so I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, for everyone watching the Losers Club, and uh, so glad that you stopped to chat about it. A great privilege. Thanks great. so much Thank for you. all you're doing.